upgrade your Scotty Straka to Rory Fleetwood because you want Rory Fleetwood and you don't think Scotty wins. Don't do it for an ownership move. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience presented by Underdog Fantasy. This is it. This is the final. Well, it's actually not the final because I'm doing a live chat for the PGA Championship at 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday evening. And I got the newsletter coming out to finalize everything. You can sub to that down in the description. But it is the PGA Championship final bets. The final weather report, although we'll update that a little bit later on. DraftKings, lineups, underdog draft, and all the news and notes you need. Plus, the finalization of the one-and-done Tambo is in studio with me. You smash the like while you're over there. I guess you can't do it because the show isn't officially up, but it is the anniversary of ShipItNation.com. Congratulations, dude. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. All your support along the way, everybody else out there. The Ship It Nation birthday celebration and exclusive code today, 24 hours only, Mayo15. Gets you 15% off anything monthly or more. Want to give back to the people. The prices we've said from the start would change a little bit over time. Those will go up. The 15% will revert back to the standard Mayo code that gets you just 10% off. But today, Mayo 15. So if you want to get in, join the community, get into the nation. Today's the day to do so. Uh, I'm giving away a bunch of stuff as well, including a month to ShipItNation.com, two annual memberships to FantasyNational.com, and $500 straight cash. And you can get in the giveaways. The biggest thing that you can do is join Underdog Fantasy by using code Mayo. You get a deposit bonus of up to $250, plus a free square for Thursday, including Scotty Scheffler at the PGA Championship. Raza and I talk through the entire Thursday breakdown. I'll have even more plays in the newsletter along with the To Make the Cut Parlay. I put out a tester earlier right, this morning. Go. 10 bucks into 13 k I like it. Those have been, hey, you got it last time, right? You got to hit it this time, too. I'm getting after it this time, so maybe that'll fail it, but I'm definitely interested. Well, when you start handing out, like, 1,000-to-1 type stuff, uh, I wouldn't expect them to be winners. Oh, come on. Thought You're right. Were... Guaranteed winner. Guaranteed winner. Guaranteed winner. Call it, Pat. Everyone can be rich, right along with me. Let's talk about the news before anything else. I have four news items that I haven't talked about on the show yet okay. that I think we should you know, try to discern. Is it going to impact ownership? One is Rory McIlroy getting divorced. Do you care? No. I mean, you don't care about Rory's soul? I, I don't care about the narrative of it. I posted a thread yesterday, Narrative Nation. There's way more than just four. We'll talk about them. That was one, of course. But um, I just, it, it, is it going to affect his ownership? To be honest, I find like sometimes it's, what is the thing? Like buy the news, sell the whatever. Like I feel like because it's so popular and a narrative right now, more people are getting behind it than actually moving away from it. Well, what I don't understand is it's not like Rory won at Quail Hollow, woke up the next morning. He's like, you know what? getting divorced mm -hmm. i assume this has been in the cards for a while and he is coming in off back-to-back -back wins yeah so maybe this is making him play better if anything else focused more on his golf getting after last week the stats were not just standard rory stats off the tee these were all over the place and looked very good doing it i know xander sort of had that little collapse you and feinberg talked that through but just to say it i mean it was just dominant rory and now we're seeing him come into a place where it could be a could be a spot so i think people are liking him even more with the news so you don't care don't care Scotty Scheffler will not have Ted Scott on his bag on Saturday. Ted Scott is attending the high school graduation of his son. Do you care about that? Do we automatically just bet the miss the cut because he's basically saying I'm already there and I won't have him on Saturday? I know it's Scotty. I know what we're talking about. But care, le the, care much less about this one. I mean, this one seems ridiculous to me. Like, as much as Ted Scott means, even if you give a caddy a stroke, two-stroke value, whatever you want to call it, What's that mean? Scotty just doesn't win by five. He wins by three. Like this to me, it's one day he'll be rolling into that. And then Ted Scott will be back on Sunday. It does not matter to me at all. Scotty Scheffler has never won a tournament without Ted Scott as his caddy. That's fine. So he needs to win. He needs to do all the winning in the three rounds and hopefully he can survive on Saturday. I too do not care about this. Hideki's back injury. I don't care about this. <laughs> Hideki, my neck, my back. This guy just always has something going on with him. You know the risk by now when you're getting in. You know I definitely, I've been saying I don't care to all these things. Typically that's the case, but you know especially with injury stuff, and, and maybe it hurts me. People, you know, my guy Hoop always comes down and he's like, oh, that's you. you'd be better off not playing. Probably. Hurt me I, last week. Yeah, it, it can hurt you all the time. My guy Sungjae, late WD, that was a sickness coming back from Korea after a win. You got you guys like, you know, Hideki doing it. It's just going to happen no matter what you do, and you just have to, it's part of the game. Move on. Yeah, and I think it actually creates a nice buying opportunity. Would Will he screw you again? I mean, obviously that's on the table for this week at Valhalla, but if you had just said that he didn't, let's say he came T9 last week, everyone would be playing Hideki. Mm -hmm. And now no one is playing Hideki. 
and the thing is, he was pretty owned last week. Like everybody did kind of, what was he, 13 or 12 or 13%? Not huge shock or something like that, but I think he was pretty owned where people are like, oh, I, now they don't want anything to do with him because of it. It's just standard Hideki. Ludwig injury. I am somewhat concerned about this only because of the price attached with it. I wrote this up in Golf Digest as like he's my fade bet of the week. Like, I'm not going to bet him outright. If you doubled his odds, then I would inherit that injury risk that comes along with it. Uh, just reports from the Grand State. It looks like he is kind of stiff. It might not make a difference. But of all the things that we've talked about, I mean, Hideki, you can get as low as 75 to 1 right now. Yes, he has the WD impact if you play him on DraftKings or one and done. And then you're absolutely screwed for the week. So I understand that part. But I think that the same thing exists with Ludwig except if you have to bet him in the outright market, it's best 22 to 1. Yeah. That, that's a bit steep. Yeah, I don't love the, the betting number anyway because it's still a guy getting trying to get his first major done. Obviously, a second at the Masters was awesome. But uh, in general, the latest news, even first thing this morning, I actually said someone that had asked him about it, and he said he's all good. And it's just precautionary, and it's there. It's a little bit sort of getting used to what he, whatever the device is that he has on there, sort of putting it in place is just kind of, that's what he was adjusting and stuff. But everyone there says he's been striping it. No issues. Looks like he's working through it. So I do think it's the opposite of the Rory effect there, where it does seem like, at least right now, Pat, that people are a little less on Ludwig because of maybe some of those betting thoughts creeping in and the fact that it does seem like a real injury versus guys like Hideki and then Zalatoris was one more who seemed, uh, you know, Zalatoris was, seemed more precautionary. Hideki's was obviously a withdrawal last week. So it's like that's where it changed things up a little bit with Ludwig people also saw Hideki outside of Louisville playing a practice round on Saturday mm -hmm. he was fine he's I think he is fine he just didn't want to play yeah I or something was up like hey I don't really care about Quail Hollow I care about the PGA championship let me get an extra two days of rest I completely understand that if your entire thing is trying to win major championships the problem with Ludwig is like he's right he's basically the same price as Brooks like in no world was I gonna play Ludwig over Brooks anyway so I'm just not going to play Ludwig I'll play Brooks yeah if you're a Brooks guy, you continue to play Brooks. That's what people do, especially at PGA Championships and U.S. Opens. And but he never gets the ownership that you think that he would get. You'd think that he'd be the highest owned guy based on the way that people talk about him, but he'll be like fourth or fifth. Yeah, he's not going to be. It's a, it used to be more. You used to even see like the late trickle, the steam would hop on because everyone would think he's going to be low owned. But what we've seen so far this year is that Anytime he's around, like the Masters, for example, it wasn't that much. So you can get away with it. Uh, you want to enter the underdog draft right let's now? Let's do it, yeah. Let's, let's enter that. Yes, I would like to spend my $20. $20, three max, no rake in the PME Classic under drafts on underdog fantasy. Use code Mayo. Get a deposit bonus of up to $250. And new time players will get a free square for Thursday. We've already made some Thursday plays in the newsletter already. I'll have more coming out along with them to make the cut parlay a little bit later on. We're waiting on one person. What were some of the other news notes that you saw that you thought were interesting? Oh, man, there's just a million of them this week, it feels like. Uh, Justin Thomas' home game, how's he going to play through that? With the, you know, even Jay, uh, Spieth was commenting on it, saying it's crazy. I play with JT all the time, and, you know, this is the most support I've ever seen. Yeah, no shit, you're literally where he's from. So, uh, you know, that's kind of the setup there. That was one. People obviously talk about Tiger's back. Who else? Uh, like being back as in playing, you know, that's always fun. He's got the goatee. The goatee season, yeah, we, we, we put that one on there. The... Uh, Man, I'm trying to think of some of these other ones that you know, I'll probably see it as we go through some of the names. Uh, Brooks, everyone said the troll post of Jenna, even though it kind of did come out the day before that it was going to be a thing. But after the fact, he posts, you know, how thankful he is of his lady after the Rory news comes out. Rom, uh, pretty, pretty hard stance. And then the Golf Channel guys coming down on Rom for the things that he said. Well, okay, what did he say? I didn't see the entire quote, but he said that he's still a PGA Tour member. He might be suspended, but he's still a member and he still supports what's going on. And so they were saying like, uh, you know, the first one was kind of like just forget what uh, it's like Aaron Obrister or whatever. And he basically said Aaron, like, Aaron Oberhoser. Yes, you got the names. That's what we got. You know, that's the setup here. But uh, he's, he was like, I want to wring his neck and blah, blah, blah. It was like, kind of aggressive and, you know, not really fine-tuned the other one though was i forget who it was but basically said i got the the wrap around here I, I got the second pick in this underdog draft right now and just to throw it out of tea time splits because this is for thursday only thursday looks fine maybe rain trickles into later in the afternoon if it gets bumped up but right now that's not what we're seeing on the weather report i'll have the full weather report here in a second if you want to hit the time codes but scotty's in the afternoon rory is in the morning 
Rom is in the afternoon. Xander is in the morning. Brooks is in the morning. Ludwig is in the morning. Morikawa and Cantlay both in the afternoon. Cam Smith, Max Homa, and Bryson all coming out in the morning for the very top-end players in this field. Then you have Clark and Neiman both in the afternoon as well. So it's pretty divvied up, which you would expect, yep. trying to get some featured groups on the go. That makes a lot of sense to me. I assume Scotty's going to go number one. What do you think I should do with the second pick? Because I just think I'm going to take Brooks. Oh, I'd, probably, I'd just probably take Rory. You would. I, I might go full fade of Rory this week. Just because I, I don't think I'm going to play 75 lineups. I'm going to concentrate more on higher stakes, three max, maybe single entries, that 153 max, the 254 max. And I just don't think like, you got to make some tough choices. And I, I do think that Rory's just not going to make it for me. And I've bet Brooks to win anyway. I love Brooks at this spot. So yeah, I'm, Brooks will be lower owned, especially in the higher stakes. I will say this. We always have these debates back and forth. I think Scotty will be higher owned than Rory when we get he to should the high be. stakes. Just saying, I, I for, you know, for whatever reason, obviously people... Th- Seem to think it's going to be the other way, but uh, I definitely think it's going to be Scotty more than Rory the higher you go up. Like I said, Rory's still getting the in- – he's not losing ownership because of this divorce thing. He's still getting love. But at the start of the week, it was thought maybe $1,200 in savings. It's tough when you get down below. There's a difference with this year versus others. Let me just make my picks here. Back-to-back pick. So after I took Brooks, it went Rory, Rom, and Xander. So the chalk – comes off the board in the draft. The only one who jumped out of position in terms of overall ADP was actually me by taking Brooks Kepka in that spot. You usually try to do the weather wave with this, but again, looking at the weather, even the first two days, initially it did look like Friday was going to be somewhat windy. It doesn't look that way anymore. It looks like there might be a spattering of rain that pops up through the day, but that's going to be unpredictable. But if the wind stays down, Thursday and Friday now both look like very good days where a Saturday is full of wind and full of rain. And then you get to Sunday, a little bit of rain and almost no wind. So I could see this being a higher scoring PGA championship or sorry, lower scoring PGA championship. Yeah, you got it. You fixed it there. Yeah, I went with the, the morning guys. I went Ludwig and Bryson. You went with Ludwig and Bryson. Then Ben Ann comes off the board and then Colin Morikawa. Yeah. So I'm up after the next pick and Neiman comes off the board. I got to take Wyndham Clark in the spot. I think that's falling too low for Wyndham Clark. I like Neiman. I like Morikawa. I just don't see in what world right now that you can take them over Wyndham Clark. I get that it's a single round. Anything can kind of happen here. Mm -hmm. But that just seems strange to me that people are now avoiding Wyndham Clark like the plague. And this is a great course for him. He sucked last week. Oh, well, he can never win again. That's why. he's Impossible. That's the way it goes, though. But, you know, you're up here again, and then I'll talk through what I was just mentioning quick before I get to my double picks. But Where's, Where's Zal at? Did anyone take Zal yet? Uh, nope, he's way down there. I mean, he is way down there. No one wants Zalatoris this week? I, I mean, by ADP, he's down there. Too. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I, but that's I, I why you're him. not going to see people pulling him off the board. So I yet. got like Tommy, Cantlay, no, no. Ah, screw it. I'll take Hideki. Right. See if I can get Zalatoris back. But you'll probably take Zalatoris now that you know my picks. No, we'll have to see. I got a plan here anyway. But the uh, thing I was mentioning just too is about the, the Scheffler thing. Again, looking at the start of the week, you thought at least it's a $1,200 savings. Everyone's like, oh, we finally got a good delta here. We finally got a good pricing setup. I still think it ended up being bad because with the way the five grand range is, there's guys in the 5K range you could play. But really the 6K range, because the 5K range exists, there is a lot of good plays in the 6K range that you can get to and feel comfortable with it. So who do you like from the 5K range? Uh, I'm just thinking out loud now, like Mackenzie Hughes, Putnam, maybe Patrick Rogers. There's some other guys down there that I would go to. Toasty's interesting, too, just because he bombs it off the tee. I think you still need more than that. But he's been always, you know, doing his thing, so it's fine. I listened to Mark Hubbard on Fairway Rolling with uh, House and his brother, Mm -hmm. Nate Hubbard. And he said that distance might not play that big of a factor unless it gets wet. And it does look like it's going to get wet. So distance it is. But he did say there's a ton of birdies out there, along with a ton of bogeys, obviously. But chipping off the Zoiza grass, he said, is very, much very easy. To Thigala. So I'm going to get Fleetwood, Thigala. Fleetwood and Thigala. I mean, I like Thigala a lot. So Thomas is off the board. How do you feel about Cam Smith and Cantley? Because I feel like they're sort of in a dead zone in terms of pricing. And I, I would take Cam Smith over Cantley, but I don't know if I'm going to get either of them. I would probably still go to Cantley. I like Cam Smith's game. I think he gets sort of overlooked now, obviously, because everything would live and he's still a great player, but it was just. Uh, you know, Cantlay may not be winning tournaments. Funny enough, they showed all those stats this week, and it's like Cantlay and Xander, the only two that keep showing up and then not winning, the the two bash bros, if you will. But the the other stuff is like, man, I, I just – Cam Smith is a hard get at the price tag. I think he's 90 – what is he this week? Cam Smith is 9,800. 9,800. Cantlay's a 10,000, and Cantlay has yeah. two top 20s in three months. And yeah, maybe it's not right. Maybe, maybe you should go to the other way. Oh, it, it's on me to pick? Oh, Jesus. Uh, Time's up. 
My, my time's up. How good. I, I see woo. Oh, see woo. It's beautiful. It, it was magic destined to happen. He kind of went off my... Actually, I, I got accuracy guys now. So I got Hideki and see woo as my accuracy guys. Brooks and Wyndham Clark. I mean, Brooks is kind of an accuracy guy along with distance. And then Clark is just going to bomb it wherever he Bro- goes. Brooks is the mental guy. Like, I think it's really... he. You know how he said after the Masters where he got... You know, last season, sorry, where he... Um, you know, whatever it was, speaking to Cantlay, bothered him. Is like everybody knew it, but he couldn't say it. It was kind of like the speed of uh, pace of play, I should say. He said he like wouldn't tell Amanda Balionis his secret after the next one. But if you really just watch him at Masters and you go back to all, or sorry, at Majors and you go back through all of them and just look, it's he's just playing the smart game, right? He's just hitting it in the middle, hitting it on the green, taking his pars. If he has to take a little bit of medicine, he takes it. And I think just so many people can't do that and we saw like just at the masters the, Bryce, the, the bryson effect he just he has to make the shot yes. the same thing happens to speed he has to make the shot mm-hmm. there's it's because they're so good at making the shot it's the same thing with scheffler except scheffler actually makes all the shots that's no the matter difference. how stupid it is he's going to make it somehow but bryson just doesn't have that game speed doesn't have that speed used to have that game i don't know what the hell bryson's thinking because Bryson's never been that guy to make the most difficult shot in the world. Like course management and easy shots are where Bryson really excels. And you might get a lot of those this week into the par fives or the short, short par fours, which I think, oh, yeah, uh, he took Jordan Spieth, huh? I'm just sticking with these morning guys that I kind of don't have a problem with. I went Spieth and Fina. Did you bet Keegan Bradley with me? I did. 175 with eight. 275. 275? Oh, I didn't play the placings. I just bet him to win. Oh, gotcha. Just yeah, win, that's, baby. That's not going to happen. Oh, yeah. What, he's won a PGA. You know what you should do? Hey, you know what? The last time the PGA Championship was contested at a course with Zoiza, grass, tee boxes, and fairways, and bent grass greens, Keegan Bradley won. <laughs> it has to happen again. Also, the Japanese course. Uh, yeah, it's going to be... Don't gonna miss take, your pick this time. I, I'm going to take... Oh, no. Someone just took Keegan. Fuck off. Oh. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll take Jaeger. I like it. Uh, go ahead. Uh, and the Japanese course that they play at for the Zozo is also Zoiza Grass with bent grass greens. Where Keegan I really like Keegan this won. week, but I was going to say we should just bet him first round leader. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Keegan, don't mess around and make that mistake where you got the big one seventy five or two what two seventy five in your case ticket, and then not bet him first round leader because that's the the likelihood. We don't have a lot to go off of with this. Code Mayo at Underdog Fantasy, by the way, the, the deposit bonus of up to 250 bucks. It gets you 25 ballots in that giveaway draw that I talked about. If you do that, if you've already done it, thank you. It helps support the show. And really, the more people that can sign up with Code Mayo at Underdog Fantasy, Tambo, the more we can do in film and pay for Cust Eats in Montreal. Yes, that's where, what we need. Where I can have the budget to get him and film him eating all the stuff he doesn't want to eat. It's we need to do that. That's going to be the best content alive. We, we have to get that. Um, the only other Kentucky course, I was trying to think of like what comp courses are this week. And there's nothing really because it's a PGA championship. But did you look at the Barbasol at all? No. Because I started to look at it a little bit because, you know, bent grass greens, it's in Kentucky. Obviously, it's a much easier course, but it's a very long course, albeit a par 72. Uh, it's where Pendrith has, like, I, I feel, and I was kind of off of it as well. But it does feel like Pendrith is kind of set up to do really well here. Yeah, he looks fine. I'll tell you in the tidbits this week, which you can find on X, at Totag and Tambo. They're out there. They're free. I think he was in four of the ten guys that I typically will put in there. So I think, you know, a lot of people are on Pendrith this week. But it's not going to reflect when we get to DFS ownership, I don't think. So another good angle there. That's what I think as well. So I just sorted. Most guys have zero. So I sorted by Keen Trace Golf Club past 24 rounds. Let's go past 12 rounds on this right now on fantasynational.com if you just want to get in on fantasynational.com and because colonial is coming up colonials next week right what is it charles schwab yeah just bet tom hoagie tom hoagie's gonna win next week tom hoagie's <laughs> gonna miss the cut this week and he's gonna win next week at colonial that's the play if you could parlay those two things together big money i wonder if you can big to, money to, miss the cup, to make the cup parlay with that no they won't let you yeah they, they don't have the colonial odds out but i've been kind of circling colonial for tom hoagie for a while because everyone's kind of off tom hoagie now and mm-hmm. yeah, this is the week to get back not this week Next week will be the week to get back on to Tom Hoagie. So past 12 rounds, uh, there's not a lot of players in this field who have much experience here. But Vince Norman, Billy Horschel, Glover, JT Poston, Svensson, Luke List, Patrick Rogers, Hubbard, and Pendrith, and Batia are the ones in this field who gain like two and a half strokes per round. Hmm. I like a, a few of those guys, actually, yeah. In the putting, obviously it's going to be a little bit faster, but Rogers, Norman, Jagger, Pendrith, Hubbard, Svensson, Taylor Moore, the Gala are ones that are gaining anywhere from a stroke per round to half a stroke per round at that golf course. I don't know if it means anything, but I just thought proximity-wise, there's no 
course closer than that. It's just you never have any of the bigger names play there because obviously they're playing in a what was a WGC, now a signature event, or the Open Championship, whatever the hell comes at the opposite of the Barbasol. But I just thought for the back end guys in the field, that might be a, a thing to look at. It's definitely a good thing if you're going to, I mean, a lot of people are going to be looking at Stars and Scrubs this week. A lot of people are going to be building some semblance of that. So I think having those guys as another reason with your process to be able to put them into your lineups would make sense to me. Final bets for the week. I have not bet Hideki yet. I'm looking for the best number possible. 75 is the best number out there right now. I don't see what the harm is in waiting eight hours to try to make that bet for when I write the newsletter, but he's going to be on the card. However, for me, I got Brooks at 23 and a half to one. Max Homa, eight, or sorry, 38 and a half to one. He's like 25, 30 in most markets. You can find some bigger numbers out there on him. I had the Wyndham Clark future at 66 to one. He's currently 46 to one, even 50 to one in some spots. I would bet him at 46. So I'll gladly take the 66. The Gala 85, I cashed out my future at a minimal loss to get the better number. Zala Taurus at 85 and then Keegan 275 to one. Those are, and Hideki will be on there as well. So I have seven bets. The Zal number, really good, especially if, he, like, again, I think everything. Isn't that, isn't that a crazy number? It is to me. And he also, everything he said was always precautionary, just making sure. People have to remember how much, remember, the guy literally left 10 million plus on the table after winning the FedEx St. Jude, whatever it was that year, the main first playoff event, which I was at and was awesome, where he then had the injury the next event, obviously on his way leading up to the finals, could have been a very big uh, you know, story for him, but it didn't end up working out. So I think he is just taking the caution, and I think he's going to be fine this week. So that number is really good. I also got Max with you. I got him at the start of the season. I predicted with Kenny on Fantasy Golf Degenerates that this would be major Max Homa, and this would be the one right here. So got him at 46, which is good, and he's, like I say, down to 25 in some places. So excited about that one. Excited to see if Max can have another big week at a major. I wrote him up in the newsletter when I was trying to decide between Morikawa, Bryson, and Homa, and I was still undecided when I wrote that. But the more I wrote, the more I talked about it, the more I got onto Homa, even to take a look at his splits. Zalatoris as well, where they've played well this year versus where they haven't played well. Long, hard, courses against good fields they're really good yeah short courses against good fields bad fields whatever not so good yeah. this one i think long hard in a strong field just hammer it out there keep it clean make ball striking and then make some putts and, and have that mentality and the mental game for homa is strong that's what's been a big asset to him this last year and a half two years where he's picked it up he's talked about it publicly plenty i followed him well before that not just for the swing roast, the guy is mentally strong, and that's part of it. So I, I think it's a huge uh, option here and like having him as an outright as well. I, I do think that you talked about Brooks and how he has the mental fortitude. Take your medicine, know what to do, know where to miss. In major championships, strangely enough, it does feel like Zalatoris has that same thing. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't put himself... He had like I remember at... I think it was Southern Hills. Like he ended up with a bad kick off one of the par threes and ended up under a bush. It was him or Fitzpatrick. It was him. Was it him? Yeah. yeah and that kind of screwed. He ended up in the playoff, but like that hole was the one that screwed him. Yeah. And that was just bad luck. Yeah. But he did take his medicine to get out of it. Yeah. I it, remember that Fitzpatrick was in the mix, by the way, he made that chip in off the rough up down and onto the thing. And then, you know, thought he was going to get back into the mix and didn't end up happening. But yeah, Zal can do it too. Uh, I think that's part of it though, for sure. In these majors, you just power is a great score at pretty much any major. When you think about it and you know some ones go some majors go lower than others but i don't know this one's going to be tough to say because i do think the rough is going to grow out by the time the weekend hits and then you also have the factor of you know it's i already heard this morning people are saying it's, it's drying up much faster than you would think i know there's more rain coming so that kind of affects it a little bit but still pound it out there keep it clean take your medicine when you can make some pots that's really what it's going to come down to Weather report right now, as you mentioned, there's still a little bit of rain in the forecast for Wednesday, but not a ton. So it will end up getting drier for Thursday and Friday. Rain overnight on Thursday, although the wind doesn't even crack 10 miles per hour right now. I'm using the Bowman Field Wind Finder on windfinder.com. You can find that direct link in the newsletter as well, the one that's posted. And I'll have the, when the new one comes out, I'll put the weather back in it again. But rain overnight, a little bit of rain on Friday, lots of rain on Saturday, and the wind picks up on Saturday. I don't know how much they're going to play on Saturday. Mm -hmm. How do you think that affects things? I don't know. I because really don't know. You, it looks now like, as, again, it's ever-changing. The rain's up, down everywhere on Friday. You know, Yesterday, it was like really heavy in Friday afternoon. Now it's pushed up a little more to the morning, so it's tough to say. But it also now 
doesn't look like enough to do too much damage, and the winds are kind of down most of the day, pick up a little bit later in the day. As of now, on Friday, Thursday, like you said, obviously looks pretty clean. So if they can get through that, you know, then there's just a chance there's just a huge delay to the to the Saturday start or at all, like you said, right, is what you're seeing? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that's kind of the, the kicker. But, again, that mental game will be important. If you got to play two full days, feeling pretty good, have a lead or something, or be up near the top of the board, and then have to sit around and wait, right? That's That's the waiting game. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it, and you'll have it out in the newsletter. But I definitely think right now it, it just looks like Friday is going to be spread out now throughout the day. Well, for the one and done for the week, I took Brooks in the three-man that I do with Jeff and Tim. Jeff hit Rory last week. He had Scotty at the Masters, so he's in first place now, so i got to catch up. He took Neiman this week. Cus took Bryson. We talked through the race for the Mayo Cup last week. Do you remember who the two players we landed on were? I don't. Xander and Rory. Very nice. So I had the team I had Xander on, I actually lost position with. I dropped from 407th place to 409th place with a second place finish. But I did get a team from 2700th inside the top 1000 nice. by having Rory. So we got two teams, two teams total, both inside the top 1000. One's in the cash right now. I look at one of these teams, and the best player I have is Rom, Ludwig, Victor. I might just take Homa. Because I do think that pivoting to, I mean, if you have one team, it depends on who you've taken, obviously. But pivoting to a PGA player instead of a live player, yeah. I do think is going to open up a lot of ownership, if you guess right. Yeah, the Brooks, Bryson's, Rom because he's less owned than those other guys. And then the interesting one is Feinberg's, because that's who I'm on this week in mine. I'm, I'm going with Neiman. And that's what I thought about. I, I thought about Brooks, but I'm too far behind. And Brooks is the most popular this week by the looks of everything that everyone's talking about. Uh, it looks like more people want to use him now coming off of a win and li- you know on live how good he's been playing etc versus waiting for the US Open and then they're comfortable if they have Rom left or just using Bryson at that spot and so to me Neiman would be the pivot I, I like Neiman much more here than I would at the US Open so I'm using Neiman okay I, I can get behind that I wonder if Neiman has kind of run out of steam a little bit <laughs> Neiman running out of steaming yeah all right. He's not steaming Joaquin Neiman anymore. Oh, man. I don't know. He, he's at that part of any given Sunday where he's throwing up behind the quarterback right now. I, I don't know. He's I still feel, been good. I, but yeah. just he's not. He was winning at such a crazy clip. Like, it's hard it, to keep those wins up. It, it's something in the back of my mind, like storyline wise, says, like, you know, again, it's all just made up stuff. But just, you know, sometimes you see the headlines, you get that feeling. And it's like the, the Mito Pereira 72nd hole as Neiman's watching in agony. And it doesn't get the job done, speaking of Southern Hills. And, and then you go to, instead, it's Neiman, the, the Chilean that gets the major at the PGA Championship and off of a, you know, it wouldn't be a surprise. The guy crushed it over on Live. People are talking about Taylor Gooch, no asterisks, not for ownership or, any, or betting or anything, but obviously he got in to the event. But Neiman was really the first one when people were like, come on, you have to get this guy in. Forget the Gooch jokes and all that stuff and wildish things that he says, but Neiman is the guy. So I do feel good about Neiman. I don't care about really what's been going on lately. It's hard to win, and the winning clip will always settle down. How do you feel about Gooch? Not really super interested. Will he make your player pool? Uh, it's possible because 7,600 is extremely low down here. But really, when you look at like Minwoo, Siwoo, Connor, Straka, there's just tons of guys around him, man. That- I, I've been, I don't know how the ownership is going to shake out, but I did see like people's pow- like objective power rankings, throw out odds, throw out price, and like Seb Straka's inside their top 10 for this week. Like, what are people smoking? I have no, I think, uh, you know, maybe just can bomb it out there, play in tough conditions. I, I Some like- of the stuff we've seen lately. Like, I, I guess that's got to be it. But yeah, I like him, but come on. I like him. I don't love him. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's the setup there. Even though uh, your boy C. Wu is getting the steam too. Is he? Yeah. Interesting. Should we switch on over to DraftKings? We can and try to figure out what's going on over there. Um, in terms of ownership, who do you think is going to be the highest owned? Man, it's really tough. I still think Scotty. You think Scotty will even? It's going to be like Scotty or a, a more of a value option down below. Whether it's it's really tough. To, like I I don't see it. I, I just think it's going to be Scotty. He's just too easy to play. People learn this from the Scotty wins this year. When the 5K range gets brought in, I'll say it again, for those missed it off the top, and we were rushing because of the draft, is it's not your standard. Like, there was U.S. Open, Sky, Skyhoke, Skyler, awesome dude. When we were looking at I think it was the year we looked at some data of Gary Woodland held off Brooks to win the U.S. Open. And there was actually a chance that if Brooks ended up winning the U.S. Open that year, 
he still wasn't going to be on the winning lineups because of the way the rest of the pool shook out. And obviously that's, you know, you, you, different things can happen, but I'll say it here. It's totally different because at that U S open, you had only a six K range with typically you'll have a bunch of qualifiers here. They can just slam all the no names and the PGA tour professional guys down at the bottom in the five K range, the six K range, and even the upper fives have real dudes. So if Scotty does get the job done, as you could expect at this point, there is going to be lineups that just, there's going to be enough combinations that it's there. So you will end up needing it. So if you're fading it, don't be afraid just to move completely off that. And then if you don't want him or Rory, you can really get into the mix of like the Roms, the Brookses, the Xanders and get away with a lot more, even if some of them get a little bit of ownership. So what I'm seeing right now, fantasynational.com slash Mayo for 20% off or get yourself in the giveaway draws and you can win one of two annual memberships to fantasynational.com. Even if you are a member, you know, go subscribe, rate and review to the audio podcast, get some ballots in the draw, sub to the free newsletter, get some ballots in the draw, get the most ballots in the draw by using code Mayo at underdog fantasy right now to get that deposit bonus of up to 250 bucks plus the free square. And you get the ballots in the draw to win some more money along with it. But in terms of fantasy national users right now, over 10,000 lineups have been generated Scotty comes out in the most of them, just slightly ahead of Rory and slightly ahead of Brooks. And then there's one tier down. It's Bryson and Xander. After that, it's Connors, Ann, Homa, Hatton, Ludwig, Rom, Keith Mitchell, Taylor Pendrith, Wyndham Clark, Denny McCarthy. Yeah, I think it gets really wild after that first bunch that you said. But I think about the first five to seven, probably how it shakes out that those five to seven are in the top eight to 10 because things change overnight and last minute and steam and moonwalking back and things like that. But I definitely think that there's going to be um, a setup here where you'll see those guys in the mix of players above $9,000 projected single digits, low to high single digits right now for me that I'm seeing Cantley, Cam Smith, Thomas Hovland and Zalatoris who no one is using, which absolutely boggles my mind. Yeah. It's 9,100 I think has part to do with it. And then who he's around. When even I, even JT boggles me a little bit because literally everybody in the world wanted him. His price didn't go up that much from last week. What was he, 85 or 8,600? And yeah, the field's stronger and bigger and whatever, but um, Scotty effect, et cetera. But um, the hometown narrative and all that stuff, I really would just would have thought, and the PGA cha- two-time PGA champion winner, like championship winner, there's, you know, interesting that he's sub 10% and it's like Neiman and Bryson getting more love. So the tournament is going to be one on DraftKings. The millionaire maker, whatever tournament you're in, is by having the right one or two guys from this bunch. Because of the way the pricing works, with Scotty being 13K, is that 7,800 to 9,000 is essentially devoid of ownership. No one is using these guys. Mm -hmm. They're all like 4% owned, 5% owned. And then you'll have like a Fleetwood who might pop up, Hatton, Thigawa, maybe they'll push 10%. But you're looking at... Hideki, Burns, Lowry, Finau, Reed, DJ, Sungjae, Jason Day, Tom Kim, Fitzpatrick, and Spieth. They're just there, sitting, and no one wants to use them because it's hard to make lineups with them. Okay, yeah, so I agree with you, but as the last statement, I would say it's actually easy to make lineups with them. Sure, it's hard no to make the other you like exa- with them. It's hard to make the lineups people feel comfortable with, and let me elaborate on that because I think the biggest factor is this. The reason it's hard or hard to feel hard to build them or hard to feel comfortable with building them that way, and we're going to get to building lineups as we always do, is that people feel the win equity of Scotty and Rory, Brooks, etc., is too much to overcome. But if what I was saying earlier, if you're already moving off Scotty or Rory or any of those guys up top, then it's okay to leave the win equity on the table if you're putting in made cut equity. So what you're hoping then for that point is a they don't win. And even if they're in the mix, a lot of those lineups get chopped up by the five and six K guys that miss the cut. And then don't forget, it's a PGA championship. I mean, you're seeing Matt multiple, like, you know, Matt back to back or sorry, not back to back, multiple time winners, things like the JT effect that we talked about. But you also see first timers get it. You see some of that middle crew pick up their first major. This would be the spot where you see that at. So if you think they can win, Over Scotty, not only could you get some of that win equity that just happens to trickle down, not from the betting market, but naturally because what ends up actually happening, but you also could pick up some better six to six and made cut equity because you're not having to punt to Patrick Rogers, Luke List, Mackenzie Hughes, Andrew Putnam, Keith Mitchell, all these guys down there that you may not want. The Fantasy National Simulator loves Ben Griffin. 
How much is he this week? Fifty seven hundred bucks. I'm just looking at all the win equity. It's like Scotty, Ludwig, Rory, Xander, Cantley, Morikawa, JT, Bryson, Victor, Rom, Finau, Hideki. Then like Ben Griffin is just randomly in there too. He's a, a good little pivot option there too. I will say because if people are going there, it's not like it's getting tons of ownership in this range. But I think like Eckroat, EVR, Rogers, List, Putnam, uh, Hughes, those guys are all getting at least a little bit more love than him. So Griffin could be a guy to separate you. To look down the list of guys that are going to be, I don't want to say overwhelmingly popular or chalk, but the the players people are using to jam in either in the mid-range or the lower tier to make Scotty or two high-end players work, Siwoo, Connors, Straka, Norin, Keith Mitchell at 66, Denny McCarthy at 63, Pendrith at 6,000. That's basically it. Maybe Mac Hughes at 58, but I think that's more fantasy national people than actual people. Yeah, he he is showing some signs. Like that's the thing. Jordan, Jordan Smith, who just popped up in everything that I looked at when I was doing my research, is at fifty five hundred. It's saying five percent ownership on him. He is not going to be five percent owned. Right. Yeah, I I agree with a lot of that. Where where do you want to get started for this and build the chalk as we usually do? Well, do you want? Okay, well, let's try to build what we do think is the chalkiest lineup. But I do want to separate it in how do we build Scheffler lineups and try to make them decent. I still think Ch- Scheffler is in the chalk lineup. Okay, so, so then, then, then they're one and the same. Scotty's first man in. They're $13,200 for Scotty Scheffler. That leaves you $7,400 per player. So it sounds like Pendrith is like a lock for this lineup. It, I guess, do you think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Denny before Pendrith, but ha- but I guess the... Why, why the, Denny? At a course where everyone is saying bomber, 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 why would anyone take Denny over Pendrith? That's just what I'm seeing. For more for more money. Maybe it's both of them is the answer. That could be it too. Yeah. And it also could be like maybe Mackenzie Hughes is not just a fantasy national thing. But- I, I, I would play Hughes with Denny. Cause now I'm trying to build a narrative for my lineup that like, listen, chef is one of the best short game players in the world. He's going to have to scramble. Let's pair him up with great short game, great putters to go along with him. But if I was going to take Pendrith, it's like, yeah, bomb and gouge this place to death. So I think if you go, Denny, like I, I do think like Siwoo and Connors come into play here for sure. Yeah, but you don't think people will fight hard to get back up to one of the other good players? Because if you take Connors and Siwoo in this lineup, so we'll say Denny, Connors, Siwoo with Scheffler, it gives you 76. It's like Mac Hughes and Neiman. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a thing. Do you? Mm. Do you think Neiman's going to be that popular? Maybe not. Who, who's the next guy that you would say? Like you could fin- I guess Fleetwood looks popular. Like you could finish this out with Ann. And who's 74? Scott, Henley, Batia, Norin. Norin was popping up a little bit. So you could go Scheffler, Denny, Connor, Siwoo, and Norin as one of those lineups. I think if you're going to play Scotty, just go pure stars and scrubs and try to jam in another good guy with him. I'm trying to see if you take out Pendrith. Who does, who's that? I, I don't have Pendrith in. Or I was looking at something different. I was just trying to see who that guy at seven is. You know, Batia. I don't know who it is. I th- I do think uh, one thing you said that stood out to me. I guess maybe it's not Denny, because I think Ann Connors, at least Ann and Kim Siwu and Benny Ann seem to be really popular. Ann so Connors does too. Connors is, fits the mix. So maybe I don't know if it is Denny. What that two v two would look like, but Scotty Ann Siwu and Connors definitely feels like a starting point. So if we take out Denny. And Norin, that gives us 6,800. How much was Mitchell? Because he seemed to be pretty popular. Yeah, that's true. He was 66. That leaves you at 71 now. And 71, Jagger, Keegan, Burmeester, Shank, Kirk, Tiger are all right there. It's probably Jagger, isn't it? I mean, I would play Keegan, but I like Jagger as well. I like Burmeester too. Yeah, what what do you think it is in that range? It's 7,100? Yeah, it's probably Jagger. Because it's the answer is Norin, but he's seventy two. So then you have Batia and Jagger, Burmeester and Keegan, who are all going to generate some ownership, but not a ton, unless yeah. everyone just decides it's the one guy and goes on that. Plug in Jagger. I think you know Burmeester's getting the uh, Burmeester might be like the Jordan Smith that actually gets ownership because it's like if you look at like stats and bombing it and some of his results and all this stuff, it's not really even. But but at Burmeester, you can go back to even the DP World Tour stuff. And he was still showing up, so it's like that's kind of the, the setup with him. But I don't know if he'll actually get the ownership, but he should get a lot more than Jordan Smith. I, I think it's going to be, and I just think that people are uncomfortable playing $5,500 players who they've never heard of before when you mm-hmm. can play a 50. Listen, it's not to say that Mackenzie Hughes is so much better of a player than Jordan Smith, especially at a venue like this. I think Hughes is better than him, but mm-hmm. I might be wrong. But they're close-ish. 
yeah. that people will take the guy they've actually heard of before, I would guess. And that's going to play into the Burmeester thing, too. If you can play Burmeester, I mean, Tiger's right there at 6,800. Is anyone playing Tiger? I, I don't think so, no. So, well, I, I, know, so I, I would know so. I just mean, like, more so it's not going to be that popular. Do you think, though, the, the Straka play is the one we're missing? Like, if you take out Jagger and Mitchell and get to that Straka talk... Well, I think Straka has to replace one of Connor's Kim or Ann. Oh, it's a hundred bucks off from uh, Denny at that point. No, I don't actually, because what I was going to say is I think what we just built was common because it was Scotty with four seven k seven k guys and a six k guy, which is to your original point earlier why that eight k range and even some of the nines when you get to like the JTs, the Zals, the ones we mentioned, not thinking that Neiman will be that popular. He'll be popular twelve yeah. to fifteen. I no. get. Oh yeah, definitely. Really? How yeah. much? How much is Neiman? 94. <coughs> He's the guy people are choosing in there over... Clark? Yeah. I've, I've got him more than Clark right now. Wow. Pe- people like Neiman this week. They're still in on him. Hey, he's a good player. He's a good player for this course. I you get don't it. get to play him very often. you got to remember there's that uh, you know aspect of it as well. I, that's why I think even Bryson is getting the love. There, there is some live love for these situational points where it's like, oh, we don't get to play him very often. I can make a story. There's a story you can tell for every golfer out there. That's why people's player pools get blown up in size during weeks like this, because there's always a narrative. We you know, talked about the tweet I put out. This is the thing. But I think if you went to Straka there. Straka instead of who? Jaeger? Yep. And, and then, then I was just seeing what, it, what Mitchell turns into. It's, it's probably Taylor Moore. It's, it's Pendrith or Moore. I, I, I was thinking um, it's Pendrith. Pendrith, but Moore looks to be more popular as well. I don't see that at all. I like Taylor Moore a lot. And I've been using him on teams that I've been like hand building so far. Yeah, Pendrith may get more. It's just they're they're not going to get that much. So it really just depends on Glover. Yeah, so you have more Glover and Pendrith as the ones from that range. Yeah. But I would rather. So what, here's the lineup that we have built right now. I put Pendrith in instead of Taylor Moore. We can use Taylor Moore to max out the money, which, as we know, people like to do, right? That's why I saw it. Yep. Okay. So the lineup is Scheffler with the four seven Ks, Straka and Siwoo and Connors, the chalk of that range. Funny that you have Ben Ann, Bomber, and then two, I wouldn't say Connors is a short hitter, but Siwoo and Connors are kind of trying to do the same thing, gaining off the teeth through accuracy, <laughs> and Straka just seems like a different player every week. You don't know mm-hmm. what the hell he's up to. Yep. And then you go with Taylor Moore, who does bomb it, has been making putts, and has an elite short game, but can't really hit any irons to save his life. You hope that it's a spike week for him in that way. And it's been going really well at difficult courses for him, which I do like. So that's the chalk lineup that we have built right now. If it was me, and I was building, this was the first Scotty lineup that I built for the week. Because I just think it's going to be Scotty versus Brooks down the stretch. It's like, how do I make this work? Scotty and Brooks together with Batia, Moore, Jordan Smith, and Keegan Bradley. I would prefer to play this sort of lineup versus the one that we just built, if I'm going to play Scotty. Taylor. It doesn't need to be Brooks. It could be Homa. Then you save yourself 1000 and you can get back up into the lower eights from Batia to, hell, Hatton, if you wanted to, or Thigal or DJ, one of those guys. But this is the type of lineup that I think I want to play with Scotty. Yeah, this is a nice Scotty lineup. I just would say that's the point. So it projects like 30 points less because of some of these other guys. But the point would be, this is what anyone not playing Scotty is hoping they're up against. Because even if you get the Scotty Brooks, unless it's a runaway, you need Batia to dial it back to the, you know, the junior champ PGA championship, that narrative. That was former, another one. Former winner this former week. Former winner, at, you know, Keegan to do his thing at 270. As much as we're out betting it at whatever numbers, he's still up there around 200 to 1. Taylor Moore and Jordan L. Smith to come through for you. And this is where people will just see these get broken up into four or sixes, five or sixes, and then say, that's great. Good, good job on your Scotty Brooks combo pack. But unless you get sort of that Stenson Mickelson, or more recently, we've seen other ones where you'll get these battles down the stretch, probably, uh, probably not going to be in great shape. That's why it's a good lineup. Like people are, are avoiding it for that reason. So I've just amended this a little bit to make it more palatable to some people. So now I can go Scheffler with Zalatoris instead of Brooks, instead of Brooks. Okay. And then you can get Thigala, Keegan, Kitayama, and Pendrith. Thigala, Keegan. I would guess that projects out better. Oh, it definitely will. It's just because it does have Jordan it. Smith in it. Thigala, Keegan, Kitayama, and Pendrith. Yeah. And just while I'm looking this up here and getting the projection for everybody, of note earlier, the Straka pivot with Straka Mitchell could be Pendrith Minwoo Lee. 
So I did see some love going Minwoo Lee's way as well. Tim uh, Whiting? Throwing him in the mix? Yeah, Coming are, in with consecutive wins. Interestingly enough, this doesn't project that much better. It's only about five points better. Really? Well, I wonder... So who is the guy in the eights that we could get back up to that I would guess projects out really well? Probably Fleetwood. It's probably guess? Fleetwood, right? Or Hideki. Let me um, see. So let's throw in Hideki. Okay. And that means we can take Kitayama down to 6,000. Just of note, is this instead of Thigala? Yes. Okay. Thigala up to Thigala, Hideki. Thigala, Kitayama to Hideki and... and Pen- oh, we already have Pendrith. P- pick your eight. poison here. EVR, Ekrot... I mentioned Ben Griffin. It could be Ben Griffin. Mm-hmm. And then we actually have $300 more to get to 89 if we really wanted to. And you could have Fitzpatrick. I like Hideki more than Fitzpatrick anyway. You could get potentially up to Cam Young if you wiggled it around enough. Or you can take Pendrith up to Denny if you wanted to. Or take Keegan up to 74, which is probably the move. Yeah, I improved it, but I think this is where people would more likely go. It's maybe not what you love, but like I think it would actually go Hughes there. And then just take Hideki to Fleetwood. Still keep your Keegan, Pendrith, Zal, Scheffler. It's just I think that's where people would land at. And it, it improved it another five points. So Yeah. I mean you could still you wouldn't even have to change Fleetwood out. I'll play both those lineups. Play that one. But I, I think what I want to gear down to is that I'm gonna build different sets of lineups this week. Okay. For Scotty. And then the different starts that I want. Like usually I try to keep right around the same types of player pools. And then, like, hey, I'll build all these lineups and like with Scotty in the mix, and then I'll take Scotty out and rerun them without Scotty. But I think I need to have Scheffler specific players to generate the type of lineups that I want to have this week because mm-hmm. I don't want to have that Scheffler with four seven K guys. I just don't want it. Right, and so that's another thing that you could set up, like as a rule or whatever it is. Once you get to your player pool, you can set a group of all your seven K guys from your pool and just say at most three. Right, so that you're not getting more than three of them, but you also won't always get three. It's that you're saying you can't get to four. That's the setup. So, if those are Scotty lineups, how much different do you think that Rory lineups end up looking? It's interesting because Rory's the twelve hundred dollars in the difference just becomes you know not a big deal. Like you can obviously see right where it lies. Like it's, it's a Tommy Fleetwood. It, it's the down same. to a Sepp Straka. Yeah, it's, it's, what do you? It's, what do it's you the choose? same lineup, but without Denny McCarthy. Denny McCarthy becomes Jagger as your lowest guy, kind of thing. Yeah, and one thing I will say, too, is, again, whether high stakes or medium stakes, low stakes, whatever it might be, the way the Scotty and Rory Delta seems to be working in the difference in their ownership does not seem like it's going to be that much. Like, you are choosing who your winner is. Do not get caught in this thing of, well... Scotty Rory? I think the Scotty divorce is going to make him 2% less than Scotty, so I'm going to pivot there where it's lower ownership and get away with this, and now I get to upgrade this. Upgrade your Scotty Straka to Rory Fleetwood because you want Rory Fleetwood and you don't think Scotty wins. Don't do it for an ownership move. Like, who do you have in that spot? And you can get different with the ownership in so many other places down below. It's like, that's an obvious 2v2 that I can think of. There we go. There's the lineup. Found the winner. Scotty Rory. Scotty Rory. Yep. Pendrith, Griffin, Nat, Moronk. Pendrith, Griffin. Nat, Moronk. Nap's a play. By the way, Naps in play for sure. I'd rather play Nap over Denny. What? How much is Moronk? Sixty-seven. It just left me in that range of sixty-eight hundred dollars left. I'm gonna. It's better than your Brooks lineup earlier, obviously, because the double projection up top. But yeah. I, I kind of like this. You know, Sans Moronk. Who can I go to what, instead there that what, I like? What do you have against Moronk? I don't. Know, you, you play get, all these guys, and I don't. That's, you, you could have Tiger. You have Pavon. You have Keith Mitchell, who I, I don't understand the love for Keith Mitchell. No, I would play like Bez or Cam Davis there, to be honest. I, I would, I would rather play, I'd rather drop to 65 and play English or Kitayama. I like English, kind of. Throw English, nap. I'll play your Griffin play just because. And then you oh, could, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take your Pendrith up to Ben, uh, up to Denny. I like Denny. All right, there we go. And that's not bad. Not a bad projection either. If Ben Griffin does anything or can come through, we might be all right. So if we just start with Rory, let's see if we can build the chalk Rory lineup. And Connors. You're going to like get one upgrade probably, right? So it's Ann, Connors, Straka. Let's see Woo over Straka. It's just see Woo's more money, though. He's w- more popular. Is he? Yeah. You can actually get both and then just let's land see, on. Let's see And then it leaves you with 7,400. Like Ricky's right there. Boy, the answer is probably Scott, isn't it? 
I think, I don't know. I can't tell if people are going to play Scott or Batia. People might be done with Scott. I like Scott. If it is the first time in ages, I like Scott. I like Scott this week. Yeah, I'm always fine with him. That leaves you with 100 bucks on the table. Rory, Rory and five, seven Ks. So you play the Scott play? Yeah, I put it in Scott. <laughs> it's funny too. That, this is hilarious, actually. The I don't want Scotty with four 7K guys, but I will play Rory. Not that you would, it's the chalk, but it's like how people look at this stuff. I will play Rory with five of them, though. Well, I, when we built the chalk lineup, it was Scotty with the four 7Ks. This is oh, exactly sure. the same as the Scotty lineup. It's just you upgrade the bottom guy to Adam Scott. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things off the top is, and we can go to it, is like pick your poison up top with the 8K guys you want. Anything with two or more 8K guys is, is unique. Anything with three or more 6K guys is unique. So how do you think we pivot off of that Rory lineup? Well, I think it's just, first off, delete everything and pick your 8K guys. All right, let's pick two 8K guys. Two 8K guys Hideki. that you like. Hideki. Okay. I don't mind some of the others here, but who, who's the other guy that you like? I don't know why I do this at major championships, despite the fact the numbers tell me Dustin is the play, that I would just try to somehow put Sam Burns into this lineup. Yeah, that's fine. You know, he's, uh, he's over the baby hump now. They yeah, had, he's, he's on the other side. Yeah, he, he came through. He battled through last week. I think it was like a 13th place or something, wasn't it? He, yeah. he's all right. So I mean, And he is one of the few guys that can putt. Mm-hmm. That's always such a nice... It's the one thing about Homa and why I ended up betting Homa. I know that Bryson can putt. Morikawa has been putting well, but I've just seen him miss too many two-footers in my life. It's like, you know, even if Homa doesn't have it, maybe he just puts the lights out. Right. So I think, you know, if we put just Rory into it for now, because if we have 1,200 sitting on the table, we can always go to Scotty, but just to see what this does, it drops us to 7K. Yep. So this is automatically, very obvious, just math, and you only have three spots left, that you're not getting four 7K guys in this lineup because we have two 8Ks and Rory. So that solves that problem. But you do not have to go... Um, you know, super low. If you don't want to, you could go with two upper six K's and land on one seven. You can stick around that Keegan range and see where that lands. It's it's whatever you like, but you kind of like Keegan, right? I got the lineup. What do you got? Rory Hideki Burns with Pendrith and Taylor Moore in Fleetwood. There you go. So three eight K guys with Rory. So Pendrith, Taylor. Moore. Because I don't see that big of a distinction between Moronk. Denny and these guys in the upper sixes. Tiger, Pavon, Bez, and Pendrith and Moore or Knapp or those guys. Yeah, it's more like uh, this lineup tells the entire story. You, you know, if you think, you don't even have to think this in this case. Matsuyama, Burns, Fleetwood, better than Siwoo, Connors, Ben Ann. Which probably. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, probably it, happens. I mean, your rankings, if you go back just to the, the Mayo rankings, the official world golf rankings with the O, Mayo, the, um, those should be telling you everything you need to know there. And then it's like, okay, but everyone will argue, but Pendrith and Moore aren't as good as those guys. They're not as good as Scott or Straka is really the, the opportunity cost. of But this in a, a fantasy points game, and yeah. if we're just talking, can they make the cut? Like, I mean, literally Pendrith just won. Taylor Moore has been just fine. You, you get a double, you know, all these Taylors in here, you might be all right. So, yeah, I, I don't have any problem with it. The nice part is this avoids all the sevens. Yeah. Right? It avoids all the nines, all the sevens, all the fives, all the tens. You're skipping so many ranges here that it doesn't matter. If you say, oh, I'd rather this guy, but he's a little more owned, you're so far off the path of the lineups that people are building, it doesn't matter. Like, you can get away with this no problem. And I am more comfortable than I think of most of using these bottom guys because I do feel like that if I have any skill – in predicting players it's not necessarily who's going to win it's which one of these goobers at the bottom is going to make the cut and like potentially score well do you you like Tadeki first out of the 8k range yes who's one more um who okay the fantasy national guy griffin let's use him for a second i just want to see one thing 11 5 how do you get to scotty in this lineup i was trying to get to scotty it's wrong it lands on rom and that's not (laughs) ideal but just to say maybe it is i don't know but like how comfortable are you with like a Ben Griffin Pendrith more if it gets you Rory Hideki and a guy up top? I don't think the difference between Rory and Scotty is that much. Like that's saying that Sheff, like if you are convinced like, I'm gonna have Scheffler lineups anyway, that I, I don't know if I'd want to do that. Okay. I, I think I'm more comfortable with this as a Rory lineup. But let's drop okay, Rory. Okay, what down. about if it's Rory, what about if it's Rory Brooks though? If well, what if we just go guy. what if we go Brooks Homa, which fits? You can play this exact same lineup. You turn Rory into Brooks and Fleetwood into Homa. 
and then you have 200 bucks on the table now. So if I go Fleetwood into Homa, I just want to see what it projects for. Who's the... Uh, and you could actually turn Burns into Fleetwood if you wanted to. So now your lineup is the same sort of lineup that we just built with Rory, but it's Brooks and Homa with Matsuyama and Fleetwood. No Burns, no Rory. It's a 2v2. This is a good lineup, yeah. I, this, is, this is the sort of lineup that I think I'm going to play in the higher stakes a version of this, except I think I'll play Zalatoris over Hideki and drop Fleetwood down to like Thigala. Would be my guess. Let me see how that one goes. The Gala. And it leaves you enough for... Hovland or Zal? Zal. All right. Not even... Blink test, boom. Zal. Okay, so this is your lineup then. You got Brooks, 10K range. Max Homa in the 9K range. Will Zalatora, so a 10-9-9. I think I've already built this lineup. Let's see. And then you've got The Gala in the 8K range. Skip all the sevens and drop down to Pendrith and Moore. So I built a version of this lineup, but it was Brooks, Homa, Zalatoris, Jagger, Keegan, Taylor Moore. Jagger, Keegan is the swap there if you do want it. One thing I will say about that is, uh, you know, just as no matter what, if these end up being the popular low 7K guys, it doesn't matter because it's very clear for, if you haven't noticed already from everything we've done, it's the 7,400, 7,500 up to 79 that's popular. Paired with these guys, too. On top of, that's where the double down is, exactly, versus what we're looking at here. So you did go away from Taylor Squared, which was really popping for a little bit there, but well, this, well, still, well, this still does pop. Well, and what we can do with this lineup is take Jagger down to Pendrith and Bradley up to Lowry or the Yala if we wanted to. But I just, I feel very comfortable with these guys. Jagger down to Pendrith. Jagger down to Pendrith. And Keegan up? You could take Keegan up, or you could take Taylor Moore back up to... You oh, you, you could take it back up to Thigala. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's the original lineup, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. All or right, so you maybe take that's up, the one you like. You could take him up to Hatton as well. Yeah. Yeah, that, sure. that's another way. There, You know, that's the, the setup here, but it's you know this is a way to incorporate these AK guys in. We started with three, now we're down to one, but you're still mixing them in um, as, a, as a way to get different. I, I just wonder what the sort of really battle like you know people have loved these three 9k guy lineups a bunch this season and now it feels like absolutely no one is going there at all well let's talk about those this week so if you're doing it I how think, are you doing it? i think you like zal i think it starts with i Homa. think the lineup is bryson <clears throat> you say that neiman's going to be more than clark i think clark's going to be more than neiman so but i mean it's a hundred dollars of difference so we'll see how it works out with clark instead and it's not going to be zal because of the ownership that we saw, but let's just use Zal for this lineup is it to build a lineup that I like. I would use Homa over Bryson, but we can go Bryson Clark, Zalatoris to start. And now we are back in that Scotty zone of 7,200. Which, exactly, with only three picks to make. Cannot get to four 7K guys because of our lineup construction. But Down you just three go spots. Anne, Connors, Denny, Knapp, Moore, whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's probably like Ann, Siwoo, and Denny. That's can what I, can see. I say that I don't really like Siwoo this week? You can. I don't like him. This is not, And listen, maybe he plays so firm and fast, but you're dealing with a guy with no distance and can't putt. I don't see how that works out well for you. Mm, yeah, we'll see. I think it's more of just like uh, he's just been a much better golfer than what... Like it used to be, I talked about this a lot last week, but it used to be like boom bust Siwoo Kim. It just hasn't really been the case anymore. Yeah, but do you want that guy this week? At, at well under the average price, I do. Like, again, it's not enough ownership to matter. If he gets to 12% or 13%, whatever, this is a... His putting has been so bad. So bad. And, like, for the better course of a year now. Like, over the past 20 tournaments he's played, he's losing two strokes per start putting. Yeah. I mean, that's... Like, it's I lost money the last two weeks. I could win a million dollars this but, but, week. But it's it's like it's but I'm just saying that if we're trying to find guys putting. in that range... Like, you're going to need your eagles. You're going to need to be able to drive some of these power fours. Like, distance becomes such an advantage here that if you're Siwoo and you just have, like, zero chance of making a 25-footer for eagle, you're fucked. It's good for a fade if you want to be off him because of that. But, I mean, literally, the 16th, 13th, 18th, 17th, 6th, 30th, he just, it's not the same Siwoo. You're not getting bust Siwoo. Maybe we do this week, and then that's good for you because you don't like him here. But I'm saying I just don't understand at 7,700 how you would say that's not an option. He's I, all top I, 20s in here almost. I, I, yeah, he's all top 20s, but he's playing like two of those are fields with 60 guys in them. They're basically live events. Yeah. And one of them's at a course where he should be awesome, the Heritage, but can't make a fucking putt to save his life. He plays at a jabroni event, the Byron Nelson, doesn't even come inside the top 10. The Masters, he's 30th. Like he was, and that's in a field with 87 guys. A, now, 
Yeah, I mean that's the eighty-seven guys thing. I mean, you can write off like fifty guys in this turn up imme- in oh, turn up tournament immediately, that. easily. I, I mean, because one of the five K range, one or two of the PGA pros are going to make the cut. It happens every year. All twenty of them don't miss the cut, so they're taking up two spots. Now the cut is top seventy in ties, so that's helpful. Mm-hmm. So you're probably going to get seventy to seventy-five players through the cut line this week. But even down at the bottom. If And listen, maybe I am off in my assessment that driving distance is the end-all, be-all this week, but I just find it very hard to take one of the shortest players in the field here. Oh, I definitely disagree on that, too, because like the driving distance thing is way overblown at I this don't, point. I don't think so. It's extremely important still, but why I say it's overblown is because it's the same thing always at these events. You see it. There's still accuracy guys that show up. There's still guys that just do – again, it's do your job. They ta- Literally every pro yesterday in interviews talked about this. Get it out there. Stay in the stay in the. You've even seen the rough pitchers, the the graduated rough. It's like uh, Matt Gannon. Shout out to him doing great work out there at the event, posting it. But like, oh, this thick major rough. No, it's forty yards off the fairway. It's like you're in big trouble if you're in that shit anyway. You're not going to be having a good week. So I I would take a look at the range that he's in and why I don't like him. I don't like Tom Kim here either. And that isn't to say that these guys can't have good weeks. But if Min Wu is going to be there at no ownership, just give me Min Wu. Min Woo's not at no ownership. What's what's he at? Over t- double digits. How could he be at double digits if all these other guys around the same price are also at double digits? Because that doesn't make you, any sense. Because you built it at the top of the show when Scotty's in the lineup with four 7K guys, and we know it's Siwoo, Connors, and uh, Ben Ann. Guess who becomes the fourth guy in? It's like Minwoo. The secondary version after those three is Minwoo, Straka. Like, the thing is about this range, it's the bottom range, and it's good for you and your lineup builds because I think it's great. You don't love this range, so it's going to be very easy for you, and I think that's a great tournament way to go about it. I'm saying, though, you you know, you didn't like Straka that much. It's not like Gooch is going to be high on your list. Tom Kim you don't really love. So, I mean, you're going to have, there is guys in this range that you can go to, but if you're not on the range at all, you won't be on him. But Siwoo definitely pops at 7,700. He's way below the average. And a 30th would play just fine in this field with any type of scoring that goes with it at that price point, typically. If we were going to do that, and try to get like see if Siwoo and Connors are in this lineup or Siwoo or Ann, whatever it might be, I would feel more comfortable dropping down to Adam Scott and getting back up into the eights as a 2v2 rather than playing those two guys. Right. And then the argument about Adam Scott is he literally hasn't done even what Siwoo's done once. Sure. Really, for, like he's done nothing. He hasn't been great. Like just there's nothing. I, I talk about Adam Scott more than anybody, but at least you're saving 400 bucks and getting lower ownership. It's just who, that's why I try and say when you're talking about Eight and 14, it does matter. And especially in a vacuum on a matchup play or something like that, you're going to take that those odds all day. But in this setup here where Siwoo can just fit in, that, that's definitely a possibility at 7,700 that his 30th plays. I don't know if I'd play Gooch, but I think I'd play Gooch over Siwoo. So that's, that's a play. 7,600, he's right there. Like even um, Connors, it's very similar to Siwoo. It's the same thought process. 13th, 11th. I mean, 11th was a team event. Who cares? 44th, 35th, 25th. I mean, it's not like he's been lighting the world on fire either, and I, he's going to play pretty similarly. I would swing like back play. to Connors has had a lot more positive results in major championships than Siwoo has. Siwoo just does. Like he, Siwoo he just, has prominent wins. He does, but he has z- younger, he has talented. zero top tens in career majors. He's been playing majors for a decade now. Yeah, that's till it happens. Maybe, okay. Max Homa was shit till made till the Masters, and now he's incredible again. He's well, he was third. top ten at the Open Championship last year too. He's piled up two in a row. So, now. any my point is, go back to our conversations at the Open or yours with other people. It's going to be the same conversation at that point. Sure, Max Homa has uh, been shit at majors, and then back C- to back. Siwoo has played in these longer, is what I'm saying. And Connors has a track record of playing well in major championships. Yeah, I, I think there's counter productive points here, but like uh, Connors has done really well at the Masters. You told me that's a shit fifty man field. Yeah, well, good for but Connors. he's also played well at the PGA at Championship, too. Yeah. I mean, Siwoo's had a, a top 15. Connors has one top 15, the same. And he has what? He was what last year? What did he drop to in the final 12. round? 12. He dropped to 12, mm-hmm. and he was top 10 at Kiowa? No other PGA Championship. He's got a 12th, a miscut, a miscut, a 64th, and a 17th. He was first-round leader at Kiowa. Did he really drop off the map that much? The Canadian Keegan Bradley. Seriously? Well, if he's a Canadian Keegan Bradley, he's going to get a PGA championship in his life. That is true. There you go. There's your <laughs> argument. That's, that could be a good one. But yeah, yeah. I, I think... Uh, so yeah, just fade... fade uh, yeah, he was 17th and he was 17th at that PGA championship. The best news here is building in sets, which you mentioned. And just to elaborate on that, is like, it's very clear you're not... You don't have... This is... I think you brought up a good point. 
you said like, I don't know if I even love Gooch, but I would play him over this guy. The good news is you can just build in your sets and fade this entire range. I think a lot of people do what you just said. So it's a good strategy tip of them saying, well, if I'm not going to play those two guys and I'm on Pat's side here, it actually makes me think that Connors and Kim both can't putt. They both don't really show up at these events. I'm not into that and everyone's playing them. Let me just move to someone else. You don't have to go to Gooch or to Tom Kim because you don't like them and they're a hundred bucks more or less. You can just drop off the range. Why I try and explain it over at Ship It Nation, the slate plans. We talk about it a bunch. Talk about my guy Hoop is like roster construction is so much more important because there's guys you like in different pockets throughout your player pool. You can just skip pockets and yes, there's going to be that fear of missing out of, but what if they come through? Well, then your lineups that didn't have them suck. But when you build in sets, back to the original point, you're going to have some with them and built differently. You're probably not going to build. You are not going to build Siwu, Connors, if you were, with Scotties anyway, because they're just going to be way too popular. So you're going to have different versions of it if you even end up going to that range. So I think it was a good uh, strategy piece that we ended up getting to from it, but I think Siwoo was fine at 7,700, way below the average. Now, because I'm not playing these guys, I didn't bring them up, and I'm, I still might play Xander, but Rom, Xander, Ludwig, Morikawa, Cantley, Cam Smith, those guys. How much exposure do you think you'll have to those guys? Because I'm not going to play them in any of my high-stakes lineups. I'll definitely get exposure to some of those guys like Rom, Xander. I'm not a Brooks guy, and so I'm in trouble anytime he gets me at an event like this, for sure. And it's, it's happened plenty in the past. And I, while I do see the mental aspect of it and I get all that stuff, I just still look at the options around it. I'm going to wait and see tonight what Ludwig looks like because I can't really get a good read off of if he actually shows up in the top five or if by the end of it, people just say, honestly, I'm happy to go to Xander, Rory, Scotty, etc. And then obviously Brooks fits into that and then, you know, dropping down. But I think the the move is definitely the 8K guys you talked about. Some of these guys at the top, like if a Rom, Morikawa, my guy Kenny Kim used to say it, and it's went away a little bit, but to be honest, they still can show up. Rom not at the Masters this year, but Morikawa's been playing much better golf. He used to say, Rom, Morikawa, just play them in these big events. And I know it's dropped off a little bit, like I just said, but for example, those are some of the guys. Rom, Kawa, Zalatoris, Jason Day, Sung J M, some of these guys. They, Day, Day, I think, is a different situation than some of these guys. He draw you get the price discount on it, but I will just say some of these guys that I could easily see showing up that people aren't going to. Well, we should do our um lineups like that after again, too. Like there are some severe underpriced dudes that we would be like, wow, well, they're gonna well, be a lot more. Let me throw this out to you then. Major championship strokes gained per round over the past 24 rounds. I have it sorted, fantasynational.com slash mayo to get yourself that 20% off. Ludwig is the best okay. of any player in the field because he has four rounds in major championships. Oh, at the Masters, and he came in second. That's going to look pretty good. So he's first at 3.57 strokes gained total per round in major championships in four rounds. The 24 guys, Scheffler, Rory, Cam Smith, Zalatoris, Fleetwood, Xander, Hovland, Cam Young, Morikawa, Rom, Cantlay, Fitz, Hatton, Tom Kim, Fowler. Man, if you like even, I'm just trying here for a second. To how, go, how do you? Well, what I'm thinking about is like definitely sample size a little bit, but just to see where it lands me. Even if I go with the only cheap guys you mentioned there. Ricky. Which are Ricky, um, Fleetwood, Tom Kim, and Cam Young. I still only have 8.6K. Like, is there any value play that eventually hits your list? Lowry at 84, Reed at 8,000, Adam Scott at 7,300 bucks. I think that'd be fair and like a legitimate sample. And, and then, then it's then it's Pendrith at 6,000 in 12 it, major championship rounds. So you land on basically Cam Smith, and this does not project well, but it's like that's so, the type of build. So it's Fowler, Scott, Fleetwood. Yep. Who else was in this? Uh, Fowler, Scott, Fleetwood, Tom Kim was the other guy up there. Okay. Cam Young was at 9K. Again, you can finagle it for different stuff. And, and then, then you had Cam Smith early on. The only reason I didn't put Ludwig, while he does pop number one. It's four rounds. Sometimes people need to realize that's just the thought process that would go into it of like, yeah, but it's the we know exactly what four rounds it was. So it's not his knee injury. It's more sample size to me. Keegan Bradley, Jordan Smith are the only two guys, along with Adam Scott, below $7,500 inside the top 10. So let's do Keegan and just, even if we want to stay away from the, the Smith stuff. Can we just drop Tom Kim to Keegan? Well, I thought we just had one upgrade that I could do here. That'll get me to 11.7. I think that keeps putting us in ROM territory. ROM is like... It actually brings us to Ludwig if we truly want to play it. You go Ludwig, we, Cam Smith, Fleetwood, Keegan, Scott, Fowler. All right, that's a lineup no one is going to have. How do I get to that? 
Ludwig with you take Cam Smith out and you drop Tom Kim into. Did you get Cam Young in this one? Yes. So is it Ludwig, Cam Young? Yes. With Fleetwood, Scott, Bradley Fowler? Yes. Yeah, that, I mean, that to me, while it doesn't project good, is an example of at least, you know, if Ludwig comes through, there's some definite made cut equity there. And don't forget, like, Ricky Fowler is looking for his first major. Again, this could be looking for it for a long time, but this is the type of stuff where you see these things happen. So Fleetwood, Cam Young sh- have shown up in tons of majors. Keegan, you've made a great case for off the top and, you know, made, made the case for even betting he's him. He's going to come fucking dead last. I can it's, see it. It's, he's going he's gonna to be full Keegan. Here we go. Got to get that first round. Yeah, yeah, first round I'm going to bet that now while Asterisk we're talking. Asterisk that before we forget it. But Adam Scott, Ricky, I mean, you can move people around in this lineup as well. Like, what happens if you go Cam Young, Ludwig, two back to Tom Kim? Does it get us up? No, it's it's not enough. Oh, what was the guy you said? Jordan Smith? Yeah, Jordan Smith at 55. What's his sample Pe- size, though? Uh, 16 major rounds? Were you about 20, to say no, Pendrith? 24 major rounds. Were you about to say Pendrith? Uh, Pendrith is actually rates out much higher, but he only has the 12 rounds. Oh, we got to give it to him then. But, this... but Jordan Smith has 24 rounds. In major championships, and he's you know he's just behind the Gala and Keegan. Do you yeah. like Fleetwood or Cam Young? Cam Young, Cam right. Young. I mean, to, right. to bet or to put it in my DraftKings lineup. Well, listen to this lineup, and it did significantly improve. You go to Scotty now, who obviously fits, and it's Scotty, Cam Young. Only three seven K guys, none in the seventy five hundred plus pocket. It's Ricky, Scott, Keegan, Land on Pendrith, Ricky. Scott Keegan, Keegan Pendrith. Yep. And then who are the other two? You get Scotty and Cam Young. Oh. So interesting part of this is while you are skipping the 8K range, you're not putting four 7K guys like most of those Scotty lineups, and you're not touching anybody in the 75 to 7900 range, which is clearly where the pocket of heavy ownership is going this week from Straka up to whether it's you know I don't know if Sanjay or Day will actually get it, but 75 to 78 is clearly getting the ownership. So it's an interesting Scotty lineup, and it does project much better than some of those ones we were just talking about. Keegan, 110 to 1, first round leader. Smash it. I'm in. I bet it's better. You have to. If you have the outright, do not go without that. You have to have it. Done, because it's already in. Perfect. All right, you ready to do the head-to-head draft? I won, so I am. You did. I had Hideki in my lineup, so that was not good for me in a no-cut event. All right. So you get to go first, sir. Who are you taking? I'm taking Scotty. Okay, and but I, then I don't want you to go super fast because I have an idea here. Okay, well, I mean, you can start populating it in yours. That's true, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think you know where I'm going with mine. So, ooh, that's not the right I don't thing. think we're going to even possibly end up on the same lineup because you hate my guys and yeah. you have other guys you love, so it's perfect. I will go with Brooks and Zalatoris as my first two picks. Brooks and Zal, Okay. Let me go with. I'm thinking, thinking here. I'm gonna go with uh, Neiman and Hatton. Neiman and Hatton. Okay. Who did I take? Brooks and Zalatoris. I'll take Homa and Pendrith with my next two picks. And now I'm eating the chalk. I'm gonna. Go with Siwoo and Mac Hughes. Oh, Mac Hughes was actually a name I had keyed up here. That was the only one I was worried about, but I knew I could save Siwoo, so that's why I went Neiman Hatton first. I wish I liked this a little bit more, because I can get up to Hideki. Because if I do more, it goes to Pender. It goes to, it goes to Thigala. I like Thigala, but, you know, yeah, let's just do that. No, Hideki. Hideki, you're, you're on the wayside for this head-to-head. It's going to be the Gala and either Moore or Jake Knapp. I'll take Taylor Moore. He, he grinded himself a nice top 20 at the Masters. He has the skill set that I like here. There's my lineup. Boom. Okay. Um, I, I've got mine here, so let me see. Your lineup is? Brooks, Homa, Zalatoris, the Gala. Got it. With Taylor Moore and Taylor Pendrith. At oh, the, the Taylor squared is just going to crush this. T squared. No Nick Taylor for me, though. So maybe that's going to be the, oh. the big fall. There's no Vaughn Taylor to play this week. You know either. what's funny is Nick Taylor fits this lineup with Taylor Pendrith, but yeah. we're not switching now. I've got you only by seven points this time. 
where I want to be coming in from behind. So this is perfect. And I've got uh, my lineup is Scotty Neiman Hatton, Siwoo Mac Hughes, Andrew Putnam was the last guy. Why Andrew Putnam? Uh, I just landed on him, but this is the guy that I was looking at just a little bit. Was um, solid last week. T29, the Heritage, 18th, the Valero, 14th. And some of the combination stuff, like just stronger fields with position placement. Like uh, there's other guys like this. If you go to the RBC Heritage, which I'm not comparing them at all, but remember how many times we've been there and seen like, oh, Cam Young can't do well here because he just bombs it and does nothing else. It's like DJ can't do well here. He just bombs it and does another back before. And it's like, then they would still show up and they do know how to just club down or place the ball where they want it and get it things done. So landed on him at 5,600. There's a ton of other options, but I really just wanted to go um, a more stars and scrubs build. All right. That will do it on the Pat Mayo experience code Mayo 15 at ship to celebrate the one year anniversary. Yeah. Lots going on. If you're playing PGA DFS right now and not involved, I mean, just not just the stuff that we have on the site and the extras and all that, but just being part of the community is huge being in there around other people, lots of winners each and every week that you're seeing. Nobody can guarantee you that you can win out there, but if you use Mayo 15 and even try it out the PGA only monthly, you can lock in 33 bucks a month. That's a dollar a day basically. And if you're not, you know, looking, look at the showdown streets. The logos are everywhere. It's just been awesome. On top of the classic slates, we had a millionaire maker winner at the Masters trying to run it back. Hopefully, me at the PGA Hopefully Championship. Me. I got the mega ticket. I'm hoping the mega can get the job done. But if not, you know, my guy Pat can. Take I, it I'm home. actually not playing in any of the millionaire makers. I don't love the twenty five dollar. It's just really tough when it's like I think it's forty grand for third <laughs> and a million first. Like I don't know. Like I think that would be worse for me mentally than it would be just to uh, you know be after it something else. So I'll, I'll take on this mega and then I'm playing like there's lots of great tournaments out there. The Fantasy Golf World Championship, all that stuff you can chase as well. Well, it's funny because I was going to get into the five fifty five, but there are no good five fifty fives. They dropped it this week because the eight eighty eight yeah has one hundred fifty and even that. So. Um, so I might just play the 250 and the 200 instead. The 254 max and the $200 single entry with 50k, I think it is this time, yeah. or maybe I can't even remember. It's really good. And then the $100 single entry with like 1600 entrance, another really solid one if that fits your bankroll. But the $5 is really solid this week. The $10 18 max. There's lots of good tournaments regardless of your bankroll. Yeah, there is a $200 to uh, 2,222 people for 100k to first. And it's a solid structure. I don't know what the payouts are. 100, 40, 20. Basically, if you're coming in third in this tournament is equivalent to coming in fourth in the Millionaire Maker with 3% of the entrance in it. Yeah, and you, if you're not maxing the milli or something like that, and you want to just say instead of putting 10 lineups in that, you just I, play one I, in this. I stopped doing that else. so yeah. long ago. Just I have no interest in it. Yeah, it's a certain, certain style. I, I like it a lot more than most, but in this week when I got the mega to focus on, I'm fine with just doing it another way, and I'm still trying to chase different lotteries, which is the Fantasy Golf World Championship. Degenerate 75 is going to be live at tonight. 7 p.m. Eastern time tonight for a live chat. I'm going to go live at 7.45 p.m. Eastern time because we have an NFL schedule release drop show starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time with Jeff and Cuss. But if you have PGA Championship questions, you can get in that chat. We'll take a 10-minute break, and then boom, we'll be off to the races talking NFL and put PGA in the rearview mirror. we got Cut Sweat coming on Friday as well. I'll announce the winners next Monday of those giveaways. So Code Mayo and Underdog Fantasy, I'm going to try to coach up Cust as we do the Cut Sweat Live because we're going to, because Underdog is offering a whole bunch of new hole by hole three holes at once that we can kind of play them as we're doing the cut sweats as we see guys come up to the hole and then i can get triggered by losing in real time <laughs> that's so it's, it's probably going to make good content Great. if nothing else but you can come play along with us with code mayo at underdog fancy you can get a bonus up to 250 bucks now and if you do it before thursday you get that free square with scotty scheffler on thursday and it helps support the show so if you let's say won 100 to one ticket at the masters on it to make the cut parlay you know deposit 10 bucks on underdog Using code Mayo, see what happens. Yeah, get the max bonus. That's what I would do. Yeah, I mean, I would do that too, but some people don't want to deposit like seven hundred. Free money. Max. Let's get after it. Yeah, but I'm excited. I'm going to get it on the Make the Cut Parlay with you. I'm excited for NFL schedule release, Ravens, Chiefs to kick off the season. That's going to be a nice one. So lots of good stuff coming. We obviously got the teases, but definitely going to tune in and check that out. All right, at Toe Tag and Tambo on X, you can find all of his tidbits up there. They're already out right now, and he's going to have more going on at Ship and Nation. Once again, Mayo 15, today only 24 hours to celebrate the one-year anniversary of ShipItNation.com. I'll be back this evening. The newsletter drops this evening, so please go subscribe to that. That will have the official to make the cut parlay in it as long as well as a thousand to one to make and to miss as well if you want to waste 10 bucks on something that can turn you 13 grand, all right? I'm Pat Mayo. Thanks for watching. Good luck at the PGA Championship. I'll see you next time. Pat Mayo Experience! Experience!
Peace.